Rock. All right, it's uh, the first part of January, and uh, young Vincent Caggiano is back from a lovely visit with the family back in New York. And we are re resuming the Beatles here. Which one is it today? We're going to do Oh Darling by Paul McCartney. Okay. And uh, uh, before I begin, I, you know, Steve, you and I were just discussing Facebook, and I'd like to make the statement that Facebook is an evil entity that is trying to take your soul. <laughs> <All right>. now. <laughs> now, what about YouTube? <laughs> no, YouTube's all right. YouTube is cool. All right. Mm. Well, we've gotten that out of the way. <clears throat> All right, so uh, we're looking at Oh Darling, and I want to preface this. You know, I have so many thoughts about the blues and how the blues works and how important the damn blues is. And it's like, you know, we have to somehow revive this form because it brought so much, so much ri richness to music. And um, I just had a thought today about it. You know, one of the things I've said is that the thing, one of the things that is unique to the blues is that the four chord of a progression, the fourth step of, of a chord template will be a dominant seventh chord. It will be a seventh chord. Okay. okay. Uh, that's that's really important. Um, and uh, the one, of course, is also a dominant seventh normally. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this little introduction because we're going to run into some stuff in the song that I, I want, you know, to, to mm -hmm. kind of like elucidate why some of this is working the way it is. So the thing about the blues is, I'm real. I had this thought this morning that um, it combines like traditional diatonic uh, scales and harmony, but mixed with pentatonic harmony uh, scale. Okay. All right. Now the thing about pentatonic is that it um, it can be pulled out of a major scale. So you would think all the notes are the same. This way, it will harmonize with that major scale. But the thing about the blues is that. Uh, it's pulled out from a, a totally de totally different, the pentatonic scale is pulled from a totally different key entirely. If I was in the key of E, all right, okay. E major, and I... In the blues, I would play an E minor pentatonic, which is tantamount to the key of G major, okay? okay. Right? Now, here's the thing I want to explain. If I took my traditional E chord, and I took two notes of the pentatonic, up here, which is the G and the D, I get this chord. The well-known Hendrix chord, they call it. E7 sharp 9. Okay. Right? Now, if I play an A major chord, what happens is if I, I can get that G in there again. And that gives me an A7 chord. Right. Ergo, you have the 7th chord in the root chord, and you have the 7th chord in the 4 chord. Okay. Okay. Um, it's a really fascinating, fascinating phenomenon. Defies music theory. I don't understand why it works. But I think there's a key to something really cool here. And one day maybe I'll discover it and actually come up with a whole different form based on the whole, on the way, the weird way that this works. Okay. The odd, odd way that this works. Now, <clears throat> let me ask a, a real beginner. The pentatonic scale can work within this, of course. <clears throat> but it also, what, it, in a way, it also is uh, uh, sort of going against it in a way. It, yeah, yeah. You can't reverse those, but you, it, it, the, the pentatonic can work in, I don't know, I keep thinking of something like a bent note. A, a bent note? Yeah. It, it, somehow that that's almost in a way, how it relates to the regular chord process. Right, right, right. And that's what they, they call the blue note, you know. Um, you know. Now, that note isn't really purely defined as just a B flat. I mean, yeah. it's somewhere between an A and a B flat. You could kind of mess and cajole it any, any way you'd like. Yeah. You know, and that infinite amount of possibilities between the two notes, you know. So it's a microtone. Yeah, it's like a bent note. The blues, you know, when you sing that... Uh, that's a convention to bend that minor third. Yeah. So it's coming back to the original third of the E chord right. rather than minor. Right. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, one quick thing, I, you know, we did this long ago, but I want to say this again. There are two things I want to bring up from long ago. One in this song is European harmony versus blues harmony, uh, which I'm going to point out in this song. And also, um, I want to go back to the pentatonic scale and say, uh, you know, what I always tell my lead guitar students, the pentatonic scale has two roots and three functions. 
okay? The two roots in an E minor in an E pentatonic scale, E minor pentatonic or E and G. So it's not just an E minor pentatonic scale, it's also a G major pentatonic okay. scale. Alright? Or E minor pentatonic. Alright? So those are the two roots, E and G. Now the three functions are the, what I just showed you. The first function is major. Second function is minor. And the third function is blues, where the third function you'll have the E root again. And if you notice, in all three settings, each one has a different character completely. Yeah. All right. So the, the again, a pentatonic scale has two roots. If you do the traditional pentatonic shape like this, the minor root is in the first finger, the major root is in the pinky. Right. In the minor root, if I this is an A note, this is a C note. If I was in some chord progression, I don't care what it is, that had A minor as a root. That's great, a little accompaniment there to There we that. are. All right. Uh, it, uh, okay, so I was saying. All right. Now, if I have a chord progression that relaxes on C major, that kind of Boston sound, right? Okay. And then finally, if I have a chord progression that is on A seven. Minor, a minor pentatonic serves as blues scale now. Okay. Okay. And I say blues scale, I, I don't even include the so-called blue note when I say that. I don't believe there's such thing as a blues scale with that little blue note in there. My theory is that that's just a passing tone and that's, okay. they're adding it to it. But it's not a bona fide scale. I have very strict rules about what a scale actually is. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So, given that, all right, let's let's take a listen to uh, O'Darlin. <laughs> 